Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Sorry it's been a long time, uh, only because that I've had no shed. Uh, if you remember, end of last one of the last videos, it will leak in. It's just an old pain in the ass, to be honest. So I've had to have a new one, and in the process, got a few new, you know, I mean, new tools to save up. Uh, but this video, uh, after getting asked lots of questions, is how do I build my CNCs? I've built a few now. Um, each one gets a little bit better and I'll just try and save a book so if anyone wants a go then I'll give them an heads up and I will build mine and these cut within probably 0.07 of a mil Re really really accurate uh, on both metal wood um, and I'll pop a little video on showing it engraving the back of a glass mobile phone which was on my Instagram so I'll, I'll put links to that and I'll just go through the components that obviously I use the electronics wise I'll put a picture up on the box because I don't want to drag that out but basically I have four power supplies in there uh, and four DM 542T drivers uh, and these NEMA 4.2 amps I just think they're the best combination for homemade I can go for loop feedback ones and all that crap yeah they're great uh, but it just it just adds on the cost which these days not a lot of people's got but yet the outcome's the same, or it is, it is for me. Uh, Lengthwise, if people say, oh, they don't last as long, well, I think the first one I built lasts five years, and I think it paid for itself in the first th three week. So it was certainly cost effective. So they're the, mo they're the motors I use. So basically, I have two, two motors powering, I uh, should I say I have one power supply powering two motors each. Um, I have the five volt power supply powering the breakout board, and they have the 12 volt as powering the reset. I, t I keep them all separate so there's no interference, but we'll go through the plasma part uh, shortly. So th they're the motors. The Z is only a 2.8 one because it doesn't need to be as powerful as the axis, and that's it motor wise. Now, like I said, I do, I'll wire them and post them off if that's what people want, but I'll put you the standard build, or I'll, I'll, the picture should be popping up shortly on, on what pretty much that looks like. Uh, mechanic wise um, usual based off the same but as the other tables I've kind of used a little bit more nut and bolts here because I can fine tune it even more if I wish so obviously built the, t built the table 1200 by 1200 a little bit bigger than the other one um, and then my two main rails this box tube in here now instead of welding it I bolted it um, obviously I think M8s uh, oh I think, uh, yeah they're M8s now what I did was to get them dead parallel is obviously put the box tube in across and obviously I, I couldn't really fail then to get them parallel but again it gives me leeway now again I wanted I wanted height between here because I couldn't get the wood under and the best cost effective way with this with a box tube in here because it does a few jobs that once it gives me the height secondly I can get my hands inside and I can actually bolt it bolt them through so again if I, if I loosen them uh, I get a bit of leeway so not only does this move that will also move so I can definitely get it parallel even if you're slightly out welding the table then on top of that my X again box tubing um, they're on slots which means again that will twist on the slots plus I can put spacers and washes in to move it up and down so obviously if you're engraving it needs to be trammed absolutely bang on tons and tons of adjustment there um, which I just thought that's what I would do th this time now again sometimes what you might f find is what I've done is when I've when I've put when I've bolted the there's a there's a bolt on there um, and basically I've put some flat bar in between now the the problem is with these you need for me at least five mil now, if you get a five mil full box tube, it becomes really, really heavy, especially for, especially for the X. So I just generally put a flat bar and just tap straight through the flat bar. So then they'll screw through this and then through the flat bar. It's only because if you're milling aluminium, sometimes the studs that you use will pull straight out of the three mil. I've done it because they're quite meaty, these motors, when, when, when they get going, quite a bit of torque. So I've had that a couple of times. So I addressed that on the ore build because I actually had them on top but I wanted to take a bit more time with this one and mount them, mount them inside now again 
I use always rack and pinion and obviously the linear rails. These linear rails on the Y and A are HG20s and these on the X are HG15s more than adequate for this kind of machine it's, it's, and it's quite, it's quite meaty, it's quite weighty. Now again what I've done is I've welded my rack onto here. Now as all you guys know what with box tubing it's very rarely, it's very rarely straight. So what I do on that side I'll tend to mit, I'll, I'll mill a fraction of it just to get it the straight I, the little a little bit of a section before that goes on I'll just try and mill it if I can um, what that then means is because these are not spring loaded because I don't really want them spring loaded because be, because of the acceleration and the deacceleration needed for a CNC machine unlike a milling machine it's difficult sometimes it's it's fairly quite a big mechanism to stop it from coming out and stopping your backlash it's it's quite a lot more work and, and again it's again it's more expensive so i found take the springs off um and try and get these more parallel the, the more parallel you get these rails then you don't need the springs the springs kind of uh they compensate if your table's not quite straight that's where i look at it and and i took my time with them like I said, i'm not the best welder in the world but when i've kind of milled this and I've got my adjustments on here and adjustments on there. It is it is near as perfect, which then leaves you with an axis that's mega straight. I should say me mega smooth and straight, both axes. And that's with a motor coupled, not a problem. And again, you can see because the tension is that great that there's nil nil movement at all, but yet there's no wear on the cogs. Um, I've always done it that way. And they'll be, they are known for the fact they'll be good for like five years. And you know yourself, in five, four to five years, if you want to rip it up or go with something else, it's been cost effective. So that, that's, uh, and obviously I've just TIG welded, TIG welded those on. Um, and that, that's that. If I wanted to add springs, I could, because what I could do is extend this bracket, make those all oval, and I can obviously put a spring to then to spring the motor back and back and forth, but you don't really need to. And what I found is if you start at one side and work the way out, you can adjust these screws as you go in, or you can put shims in um, if you if you don't want to mill it, uh, because like I said, box tubing is never never mega straight. And that's how that's how the mechanics are done. Um, and then obviously to the to the plasma side, as you guys will know. I used to use the Jassic because I'm a fan of Jassic stuff, not a problem. Uh, but with the price that the gentleman paid for my machine, it, it let me upgrade to the Hypertherm because they wanted a little bit too much money for the Jassic this time. And I thought it wouldn't be cost effective. Um, now the cut quality, which you'll probably see again, I'll put some pictures up of what this is cut. Um, it, it's very similar to the Jassic. Uh, but I'm realising the hypotherms consumables last far, far longer. So yeah, it, it, it is a more expensive outlay, which I think will save money for future. So that, that's the way I've done that. And that's it. You've got your water table, which again is pretty much one metre by one metre water table. Um, obviously, I've bent the slats. They just cut. They just cut longer and then just bent into shape. It's only in case you're cutting a square out because you don't want obviously to land, to land on one of these and go straight across. But yeah, it's just more of an offset, and it's the it's 60 mil deep, which is more than adequate. And on the Z, um, I use it's a floating head. So people ask about torch high control. Uh, I made one with out top torch high control, uh, and it did me well. But everyone kept saying, oh yeah, you know what I mean, you need that. So I thought, well, do you really? So anyway, so I made the second one with it, and no, you don't need that. So this new one come without it. Well, it was just less messing about. Um, like I said, with this floating head, it's on a switch there, but that's on another HG15, so it's smooth as anything, which just enables me the pierce, or should I say the pierce height is always the same, so every single time it pierces the same, which, which is what I want. Now I find that the, if the water table is at the correct height uh, and the speed, the cutting speed is correct, I get very little warp. Now the finished sheets I cut are 0.8 um, and 
I can cut those with no warp. So the thicker the steel, I get less warp. So I couldn't see the point because obviously to put a, a torch high control, it's another breakout board, more expensive breakout board. Then I've got another one. Oh, it's just well, my head, my head's hurting already with with the extra cost. Um, and I think I've never needed it for about five years. I'm not cutting corrugated sheeting. Yeah, I'm uh, cutting brackets out, badges, signs, or whatever. So I've never needed it. Um, if you want one, I can give you the information on torch high control. But I've never felt it. It was necessary. Now, what I've what I've seen people do is they use like a, a hard mechanism for torch out control. So they 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 fit they fit mechanisms on the bottom of here. So as you're going around on the metal, they touch. So obviously, if it goes down, it, uh, but they don't. I can tell you they don't work because what tends to happen is like this piece here. So when you look at the side, when it fall, when the pieces fall through, it just catches. Once you catches, it just drags your piece out, and, and that's it. It's a new sheet. So I, I just find that if you're going to be cutting right to the edge of a really thin sheet while it's cutting, I just hold it down with a pair of pliers. Um, other other than that, I've not seen any massively big advantage over torch hand control. Now some of the guys out there with the bigger machines will obviously vouch for that, which I don't know their cutting speeds, I don't know their amps. Um, Happy days. Now, now, what I do know with, with this is when I've looked, is everyone tries, to, everyone sets these hypotherms on 45 amp and just whacks the speed straight up. Um, I don't do it that way. I, I like the comfortable speed on this. What what this runs at? I mean, this this accelerates pretty quick and decelerates for a big machine. But I think my cutting speeds are between two and three thousand millimeters a minute. It, it's fast enough for me. And then obviously the thick the thicker the sheet I go, it, obviously that speed will come down at that speed and at that amp because I think I'm on about 28 amp at that speed. Uh, it doesn't warp. Um, like I said, things might change in the future, but that's what I use. So I use I use floating head because I do, I do think it's really important that on every pierce that it's a given height, uh, which I think on this machine is 1.5 mil. I think well I think PSI is two mil and then it drops to one point five, one point six. And I know that every start of every cut from a lead in and lead out is is that. And that's the crucial bit really which makes a neat cut. Because if that's out you'll take a divot out. Uh so I th I think floating head is is essential because it must pierce and then drop down. If you're piercing from your height, you you you'll then be looking for you'll need at least a four mil lead in. And then some small pieces that I cut, you won't get four mil lead in because at two mil, sheet cam will just say, nah, your, your arc's too thick for that. It won't be doing the two mil, in which case then you'll get a pierce all. But I'll go through, I'll go through some of that in the episodes when I set sheet, when I go through sheet cam and show you guys how to cut some signs and stuff like that. Because I'm, I'll be doing quite a lot of stuff now this year. Now I'm back up and running. So any questions? Um, just ask away and thanks for watching and you will see me soon on here. Cheers guys.